G'day guys, so this is going to be a quick time lapse of the third wall in the carport that we're building. The uh, two walls there were rammed in two separate days. So on the right hand side you've got the wall with the pillar, then on the left hand side you've got the wall with the rake top and the, the infill for a double door. Um, and you can see the keyway going down that wall. Now the reason we're not doing the raked wall next to that one first is because if we did that the um, it'd be very difficult to get the forms to fit correctly around the corner so we're doing this wall here which is actually not just a wall it's it's a wall with a pillar at either end um, we're doing it all in one hit there's no joins or anything like that but it changes thicknesses so on the right hand side where those uprights are that's 2.4 at the moment that'll be going up to uh, three and a half meters that's going to be a 600 by 600 pillar because that's going to have the weight of the truss on it. On the left it's 450 by 600 um, and now he's putting the doorway up and getting that all level and, and ready to put the acro props in. Now each section of what we're doing uh, and what I describe now if you're a subscriber you'll see specific videos like one video of covered doors and windows and infills and that'll have lots of details. Um, and tips and tricks. If you're a paid subscriber, you'll have even more information. You'll be able to actually make your own forms or get someone to make them for you. You'll have the full dimensions and details now. On the right hand side there, um, uh, there's, you can see there's a bit of polystyrene on top of that conduit. That's because there's going to be a subboard for the electricity in there. So I'm bending lots of um, conduit and measuring all that up. So essentially, we're just getting ready for the Ram Day and the older boys are fixing the younger, younger kids' bikes, it's great to see. So when we come uh, to ramming, so this is uh, the ramming day now, we've got um, a video from both angles, now it's not totally synced up, please uh, excuse that. We will uh, work on getting that uh, sorted out, but um, we've already prayed for the day, we're getting into it, I think we have, maybe that's, no, that's what we're doing now, praying just asking Jesus to protect us and um, then we get stuck in now as you can see because of that doorway in the middle there we've got a shovel in you can't put the bobcat right up to it the boys are gonna have to shovel in each section and then ram around now uh, because they're pillars we have anchored the pillars to the ground again there's a specific video for pillars and for anchoring that I encourage you to watch and again if you're a paid subscriber you have details on exactly what sort of metal. Um, now just a word of warning here, do not put a rod or an anchor into the concrete below the wall and then go all the way up the wall. It's the wrong way to do it, you'll have trouble with that and if you have uh, talked to an engineer they will, the engineer will say do not do that and there's good reason for that. So again look at the pillars uh, video that we'll hopefully have up shortly. Now, as you can see, they're putting more and more conduits in. That's for electronic wall boxes at the bottom of the wall. And that really does slow you down. So you've got to get them at the same, at the right height. You've got to level them. Here goes the second form now. The younger kids are putting pegs in, putting pins through. Everyone's got their own jobs. Um, the, uh, the conduits um, are also getting in the way for when you're ramming. So now you've got these conduits. You can't just ram straight along the wall and you've got you know, in, a, in a normal wall you've got 300 mil, so we've got a, you've got a foot width and the rammer fits in there easily, you can go back and forth, it's real easy. Well when you've got conduits there you can't, so if the conduit's in the middle of the wall you've only got 150 or 6 inches on each side and that's normally bigger than your ram head, so it does make things a little bit harder. As you can see they've also got the rods for the pillar going up the wall and, um, and there's lots of conduit in there, so there's lots of things to look out for and those fiddly bits really do add to your wall. If you're just doing a retaining wall, you're just doing a wall with no services in it, it's much, much quicker. But we've found that it's always better to do it uh, on the go as you're doing it, even though it takes longer on that day, the amount of time you save uh, later down the track is absolutely incredible. Um, if you can imagine trying to put uh, conduit or electrics down these walls, you would have to chase the wall and then try and repair it. It would just look ugly. We'll show you how you can actually do that. We've had to do it once in one spot where we forgot to put, uh, well, we actually decided we weren't going to put a ceiling in, so we had to move the power that came out into the ceiling cavity. 
we had to take it somewhere else, so we did have to chase one, one section. Um, but again, as they get up to the top now, so they're the third form, so that's, uh, what's that, 1800? And once they get to the next form up, you'll see that they start to ram across that form for the doorway. So he's standing on it right now. So that there, he'll actually ram straight onto that when you put the next forms up. Um, there's power at three or four different levels in this wall. So there's some down the bottom for fridges and freezers. There's some at 1.2 metres high, which is for light switches and GPOs on top of the breakfast bar. And then there's some uh, up the top for lighting or security or whatever to, to sort of shine out into the whole carport or even outside the carport. Um, so as you can see here, it, the young kids would. So that's four forms, so that's 2.4 metres high. We um, discourage the kids, the younger kids anyway now, that's starting to get a bit more dangerous at height. So they still might put some pegs in and that sort of stuff. But again, they've done, they've done a great job today. Um, and often they'll want to do a lot more, um, but we sort of say, we'll have a bit of a play or, you know, do some book, book work, some learning. Um, once we get to this height, um, just trying to say, oh, he's putting it on the left-hand side there, he's putting an end key in. So that's to lock it into the next section of wall. And there's a nice view of the back of the bobcat, which you can't really see much else. Um, we took a piece of land. It might sound strange, but God told us to buy it, despite not having the money. He told us to build, despite not knowing how. We had to learn each step of the way, research, trial and error, training, whatever it took. We've documented each step of the way, and we're able to teach you many, many things that are going to help you live with and for God, help you build your family, help you build your home, and help you build your business. Be sure to subscribe. We're also putting together a rammed earth course. Some of it will be free. Some will be a trade-off as we tell you about Jesus, and some might be a paid subscription to help us cover costs. Either way, all of it will be very, very useful. So hit the subscribe button or click the link to see all the details about our Round Earth course. And so now they're at 2.4 metres. Now, once we get it to the next form up, I think they might even use the bobcat to lift the next form up, but the next form up things get uh, more difficult now you can see how much conduit they've got in the wall um, all of it's up at height so now here's the the next you know, there's the fifth form and as you can see they used the bobcat to lift the form up and um, because there's a scaffold there the younger kids are actually putting the pins through so every time he leans over the wall they're putting a pin in and um, it makes things go a lot quicker for the two main guys, Jedi and Elijah, who are doing the main ramming. Um, we do try and do as much work for them because they're ramming, and so we try and make sure um, as much as we can, we can we can help them out so it's ready to go. Um, there's also, I think they've just put a wall plate in this. Looks like he's putting the wall plate there. So the wall plates again. There's videos for uh, wall plates and what we call the bond beam. So when you put the roof on, the roof screws down into a bond beam, so that's your, uh, well for us we always use metal, we've got a lot of white ants around here, we've used metal for everything. Um, that beam has to be held down into the wall, that's not just a, a couple of, you know, bolts or diner bolts or whatever, that's a rod inside the wall that goes down um, quite a way, it's got a plate on the bottom. So again, if you're a paid subscriber, you, we'll give you the details for that. We'll, We'll show you exactly the dimensions and all that sort of stuff to do. Um, the what are they doing these rounding up in the corner, and it, you can really see there's just so much conduit there now. He's really having trouble getting that ram around them, so it is difficult. So this must be form number six, is it? Um, on this side, uh, that's five. So this form must be, they must be lifting one up out of the bucket there. So no, they're still at five. Oh no, there it is. Yeah, there's six. So that's six forms, they're 600 high. So that goes up, that's 3.6 metres now. So that's all we need for the bulk of this wall, is 3.6. But then the wall that's going to butt in and join up to that raked wall, so the pillar, we'll call it on the far, if you're looking at the uh, left image at the moment, the bit closest to you is going to keep going up to the top of that conduit pretty much. Um, whereas if you look at the right image, the orange forms, they're 3.6 uh, 
metres tall, that's, it actually only needs to be 3.5 so they won't quite ram to the top there. And where they're both uh, standing there on the bobcat bucket, that, when that's at 3.5, the bottom cord of the truss will go across there. That'll be an I-beam and then there'll be uprights welded to the top cord, which will be um, an RHS piece of steel. Now again, if you're a paid subscriber, we'll give you the details of um, you know the dimensions for that. Now that is, we've got a truss because we want the south roof to go higher than the north roof, which means we can put windows in which will warm up the inside of the building in winter. Now obviously if you're in the northern hemisphere, you have to reverse that, but we all our north facing walls and windows are all very tall and big to, to get as much light and heat in in winter um, but then in summer the sun is on the south side so we have that shaded and you know, hardly any windows and that sort of thing um, as you can see there they're just putting those forms up to that top rate section and that's the only bit there that they need to go higher on uh, thankfully so it's pretty complex what they're doing now it's it's a case of piecing things together tech screwing it and uh, we hadn't finished it was starting to get dark and we always try and finish by um, we try and finish by five but we had actually had a, a couple of breakdowns with the bobcat this day um, pretty hard to see or notice that on the time lapse but um, it's a crack starter motor and all sorts of things so there we go we've pretty much finished it's it's uh, just hitting 5.30 or 6 o'clock at night. Hopefully that's helpful guys. Um, stick around for the next uh, next rendition and you should be able to see um, some good progress of what we're doing. Keep on building guys.